السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف I am grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of visiting you again here in this center and I hope inshallah our time tonight would be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an attempt for understanding better some of our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards the truth and towards our community. When we study the Quran and then reflect on our hadith and follow that by studying carefully the works of some of our great ulama who have been outstanding in their knowledge, shukr, in their dedication and in their wisdom. We find the same line in the Quran, in the Hadith, and the works of our outstanding scholars that Islam is not a religion for just individuals. The aim of Islam is not just to have pious individuals. This is very important. We should have pious individuals. But this is not enough. The aim is to have in the first place a community of the pious people. Or in other words, to have a pious community, a faithful community. And then with their struggle, would have humanity united around the truth and justice <coughs> and virtues. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not force his plan on human beings because then it has no value. He says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهَ لَجَّمَعَهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَى Had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he would have brought them together around the guidance, around the truth. It means that that is what we want to have, but he doesn't want to force it. He wants to have that unity around the truth, but that is something that we have to struggle. He wants humanity to have just relations, but he doesn't force it. He sends all the messengers, so that people establish that social justice. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ So قِسْتِ is the aim, but لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ People should learn from the messengers and under the leadership of messengers and imams establish this universal justice. So the aim is unity of humanity, but an intermediate aim <coughs> is to have a community of the faithful that would be acting as a role model for humanity. And then humanity would be inspired and they would follow their example. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُحَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا 
In the same way that Rasulullah is a witness over Ummah, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ So Rasulullah is Uswa, is an example, is a witness. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَى عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونُوا الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَيْدًا You should also be witnesses for people. So we should have an Ummah inspired by the example of the Prophet by the examples of Imams and previous prophets who would then themselves become examples for other people. And then humanity would follow this path. So we are not only interested in having pious individuals, we want to have pious community and then inshallah a pious humanity or at least a just humanity. At least justice has to be observed as a bottom line. But we believe that humanity with the nature, with the fetra that Allah has given humanity, if is treated with justice and dignity, most of them would also become virtuous. It's not that they would remain at the level of justice. So we need to have community of the faithful. If we refer to some verses of the Quran, I think this becomes more clear. I just mentioned some examples, but this discussion is very broad. And Allah Tabatabai Rahmatullah in Al Mizan has studied this and he makes a very bold statement actually he says there is nothing in islam except that has social aspect we don't have some for example issues which are personal and some are social he says everything is social even salat is coming with social dimension fasting hajj everything charity you cannot find anything which has no social dimension so, for example, one of the things we find is when it comes to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses believers. You find many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Many, many times. Oh, those who believe. But you don't find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhi amana or Ya ayyuhal mu'min. <laughs> you know, in our majalis, in our conversation, many times we talk to individuals. Say, a mu'min khuda, a bandi khuda, you know, be like this. But the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to people is Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu And Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Unlike what many people think It doesn't mean Ya ayyuhal mu'min A Ya ayyuhal mu'min B Ya ayyuhal mu'min C Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu means All together As a whole It's an address for the whole ummah it's like, Ya Ayyuhal Nas. We have Ya Ayyuhal Insan, but we don't have Ya Ayyuhal Mu'min. Or Ya Ayyuhal Ladi Amin. So, the address is for all humanity. Or, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how to address Him, You find that in many places, not all, but in many places, we address him on behalf of all of us. For example, لا صلاة إلا بفاتحة الكتاب In every salat we should have Surah Al-Hamd. In Surah Al-Hamd, what do we say? 
So Surah Al-Hamd is perhaps from the beginning meant to be part of also Salat, is designed for Salat. We say, Iyaka na'abud, not Iyaka a'bud. Even if I am saying my Salat <laughs> Farada individually, I have to say Iyaka na'abud. You know, sometimes you go as one representative and speak on behalf of the whole community. Sometimes all of you go. So whether you all go or one person goes and speaks on behalf of all, it's a collective matter. It's not a personal matter. Iyaka na'abud. And also, when we want to make the contrast, again, we don't refer to bad individuals who have gone astray. We also refer to the group, the whole community, who are maghduba alayhim or who are dhalli. Not individuals. This continues till end of Salat when we want to finish our Salat. Assalamu alayya or Assalamu alayna. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah as salih. Not Assalamu alayya. Assalamu alayya. Or so much emphasis on Salatul Jama'ah to the extent that I think there is no exaggeration to say Salat is designed to be said in Jama'ah. But we are forgiven if we do it for other. <laughs> but the main plan and design is to be Jama'ah. Even why we do azan and iqama? This all makes sense if it is jama'ah. It more, makes more sense if it is jama'ah. It is meant to be jama'ah. You declare that salat is going to start. You have called for prayer. Everything is for jama'ah. But of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us some kind of flexibility. He says you can do it for other. But it has to be jama'ah. So, mu'minin should go for jama'ah. Then when they go to salat, they should not stand in different corners of masjid. They should stand shoulder by shoulder. No gap. These are all symbolic. It's not uh, just, you know, a kind of protocol without meaning it has deep a spiritual meaning that means that you have to be united when your shoulder touches the shoulder of the next person it means that no hatred is going to remain in between when you shake a hand no hatred can remain or for example, one of the beautiful, all of these are in need of discussion. I just make a few examples uh, so that I move to the second part of my talk. But you know, if you reflect on different aspects of Salat, you see how even in the Salat we are building a community. Imam al-Jama'ah should be a person who at least is pious, if he is not the most pious person in the community, at least he is pious. We don't have the condition that he has to be the most pious, because then life may be difficult for people to force or convince people who are the most pious to come to masjid and lead the salat, but at least he has to be pious. At least he has to have the potential of being a good role model. But when it comes to Salat, he's like a leader, leader of Salat. And one of the beautiful things is that Imam al-Jama'ah should be followed. We cannot go 
fast before him, ahead of him, or fall behind. And on the other hand, Imam is advised that he should consider the condition of ma'mumin. Imam cannot say, I am a very young person, for example, or, you know, he is in a very good spiritual mood, you know, he wants to be in ruku and sujood half an hour, he wants to recite Surah Baqarah. No. Azaful ma'mumin. We should consider the condition of the weakest member of the congregation. But have you thought about this? What is the implication? When Imam can consider the condition of Azaful Ma'mumin, when he knows every member of the congregation, and he knows who has back pain, who has knees arthritis. He must know all these things so that he can consider that. It means that you are dealing with a group of people who have very close ties and bonds. They know each other. One person who doesn't come, they know he's ill. They go and ask about him. So there are lots of things in Salat which is all showing that we are dealing with community and we are building community. Then when it comes to Jum'ah, all masajid should get together in the town. In the Shia fiqh, we don't say Salatul Jum'ah in every masjid. At least there must be a distance. The idea is that we get together. So every day we get together locally, but then in the whole town, we get together. Then in the shrines, we should have mu'minin of different places coming together. And in order to encourage us to have many places for getting together, they have told us, you don't need all to go to Karbala. If you go to any of these shrines, it's as if you are in the same place. Even if you go to Hazrat Abdul Azim, it's like you have gone to Karbala. When you are standing next to the gate of Imam Raza Shrine and you ask for permission for entrance, you say, Allahumma inni waqaftu ala babin min abwaab buyut nabiyyik. I am entering house of the Prophet. This is one of the entrances of the house of the Prophet. The idea is that Mu'mineen understand that whether they enter from Karbala or Najaf or Samarra or Kazimain or Mashhad or Qum, they are connected to the house of the Prophet and they can get reward, they can get light. But the social impact of it is, is that the, all these places become crowded. Many from all over the world go to these place, places. I'm not going to say they are equal 100%, but I'm saying that when it comes to encouragement, we are encouraged to go to all of them. So, there is a plan to have mu'mineen together, daily basis, weekly basis, annual basis, then when it comes to Hajj, it is so important that Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif also joins them. As we have hadith that in every season of Hajj, he attends Hajj, he sees people and knows them, but they see him and don't know him. Yarahum wa ya'rifuhum, but people yarawnahu wa la ya'rifunahu. They know him, but they don't know who he is. They, they see him, but they don't know who he is. So, the idea is to bring mu'mineen together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً And 
I think this is not an exaggeration. We take it like a kind of exaggeration. How can we be brothers? You know, brother is someone that shares my blood, my DNA. We are coming from the same father and mother. How can we be brothers? This is perhaps a kind of emphasis. But no, this is reality. Indeed, I think mu'minin are to be closer to each other than blood brothers who are not necessarily mu'min. Habil and Qabil were brothers. How close they were? Two mu'min should be closer to each other than blood brothers who are not mu'min. Yes, if there are two brothers from the same father and mother who are also mu'min, so they have two reasons for unity. But if the reason for unity is just blood, Iman is much more important than blood. So this is not an exaggeration. Indeed, this is just part of the reality. The reality is much more than this. The ties of brotherhood between mu'mineen is much more than this. Imam Raza alayhi salam in a letter to the Mu'mineen, to the Shia of Abe and Save, that area in central Iran, says that Mu'mineen are like brothers and sisters from the same father and mother. Even not, for example, same father but different mothers, or same mother, different fathers. The same mother and father. This is to show the closeness of this relation. Another expression is mu'mineen are like one construction, one building, one castle. We have hadith that mu'mineen are kalbunyan. In the Quran we have إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنهم بنيان مرسوس. But if someone thinks that this is only for مجاهدين, no. Hadith says all مؤمنين كالبنيان. يشيد بعضه بعضا. Each مؤمن is like a brick, but community is like a building. These bricks come together under a management, under a design. Everyone takes a role and remains loyal. And then you can build upon them and have a construction. Sometimes I say to brothers and sisters when we talk about unity of the community, I say if we don't have unity, we are like bulk of bricks. Imagine if we have one, two, five, ten lorries and they unload lots of bricks in a land. What is the benefit? If you are just going to have them and watch them, what is the benefit? Lots of dirt you know, will be produced. They occupy the space. And if you are not going to use them to build something, it's better not to have them because it's just creating problem. The beauty of bricks are when they are put together and something solid is built. If it is just bulk, what's the benefit? If mu'mineen are in thousands in number, but divided and scattered, what's the benefit? It would be like Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam.
I think Amir al Salam, whenever he wanted to make a major decision before worrying about Muawiyah, he had to worry about people of Kufa. What would be their reaction? You know the story of Salat al-Tarawih that when Amir al told Imam Hassan after he became Khalifa, go and ask them not to say this. Imam Hassan alayhi salam went and said not to say Salat Tarawih. Then I started protesting, objecting, creating noise. Wa sunnata fulana. And then Amir al said, what do they say? He said, they are protesting. He said, leave them. You know, sometimes people think that uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam uh, never showed flexibility, but this is not the case. They also sometimes showed flexibility. Amir al showed flexibility. Imam Hassan alayhi salam showed flexibility. Rasulullah showed flexibility in Hudaybiyah. So sometimes you have to show flexibility. So people in Kufa didn't listen to Amir al So what is then the value of? Uh, Thousand people or one hundred thousand or one million, if they are not going to listen. Even someone like Amir al Mu'minin says, La ra'iya liman la yuta. What's the value of, this, of opinion of someone who is not followed? If one million people don't follow Imam or one thousand people don't follow Imam, what's the benefit? You say, you know, Alhamdulillah, we are one million people that we don't follow our Imam. What's the benefit? We are 10,000 people, for example, in this town that we are not united. Some years back in one city, I don't say which city, someone told me, Alhamdulillah, in Muharram we have 14 Urdu Majalis. I said, I don't know, should I be happy? Should I be sad? Do you have 14 Majalis because, mashallah, all the centers are full? And people overflow, then you have to add a new center, and then you have found all the locations. For example, you have divided geographically the whole town, and they said, here we should have some place here. Or now, every few people who cannot get along with each other, they open a new center. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we have made progress because we have now 14 majalis. Maybe if we had one, it was better. Or maybe... We have to have 14. I am not judging, but I'm saying number does not show anything. Quantity does not show any progress. Unity shows progress. If we want to offer something to Imam Zaman Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. In my humble opinion, but I say it with thinking i'm not saying just right now something has come to my mind i have i say it with thinking my humble opinion is that the best thing that we can offer to imam mahdi is a united community if you say oh imam we have made hundreds of buildings for you he says i'm not a real estate you know person i'm not a developer you know i, I have no interest in buildings I want this building so that you get united and form a community. Oh, Imam, we have, I don't know, hundreds of majalis for your grandfather, Imam Hussein. But then you hate each other? What is the value of majalis if you don't, you know, you get united? The most valuable thing that we can offer to Imam Mahdi is that, Alhamdulillah, we are 40 people united. This is much better than 40,000 divided. We are 40 people that we die for each other. That's the best thing. If someone can say to Imam Zaman, we are, here we are, 40 people, we die for each other. Not just we die for you. We die for each other. To die for Imam is not a big thing. Everyone claims that I, to die for each other. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam said, that the companions of Imam Mahdi 
Amirul Mu'minin, many generations before said this. The companions of Imam Mahdi are those that are very determined. Very determined. You don't find weak people among the companions of Mahdi. They are so determined that law hammu bi izalat al jibal al rawasi la azaluha. If they decide to move mountains, they will do it. If they think that this is the right thing, they will do it. They don't say, you know, it's impossible. Unfortunately, many times because we are lazy, we say it's impossible. For human beings who are mu'men and determined and united, Almost, I'm not saying everything, but almost everything is possible. <laughs> if you are mu'min and united and determined. Even people who have not been necessarily mu'min, look what they have done. You know, China wall. If they were la lazy people, they would say it's impossible. How can, you know, such thing be built? <laughs> look at, you know, for example... Pyramids in Egypt, without, you know, techniques. They were determined and they did it. And now on top of that, if you are Mormon and you have the support of Allah, you can do everything, almost everything. Yes, maybe you cannot, for example, you know, bring dead people back to dunya. You need to be given miraculous power of Isa, alayhi salam. But most of the worldly things, you know, we want to make... Motorway, we want to make a school, we want to make university, we want to make hospital. These are not impossible. These are very possible. Lohammu bi izalat al jibal al rawasi la azaluha. If they make hemma, the determination, they have determination to move mountains, they do it. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam says, كَأَنَّمَا رَبَّاهُمْ أَبٌ وَاحِدٌ وَأُمٌ وَاحِدٌ They are like people who are brought up by the same father and mother. I don't know if you have seen, for example, I have seen families who have adopted children from other nationalities. You know, for example... This person is, say, English, but has adopted a child from Asia. So when you look at the children of the family, some of them are white, some of them are yellow, some of them are brown. They have different color. But because from childhood they are brought up in the same family, their akhlaq is the same. كَأَنَّمَا رَبَّاهُمْ أَبُنْ وَاحِدْ وَأُمُنْ وَاحِدْ Shia can be from east, west, north, south. They are to be the same in akhlaq. They should have the same fragrance of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And this is possible. I have seen there are, alhamdulillah, mu'mineen in some places that they very much Unite with each other despite differences in background, ethnicity. I have seen also in other religious communities they have done this. It's possible. If education is a strong first. Second, in education we give priority to unity. Then people who come to our majalis, to our madrasa, to our school, to our camps, they should learn how to become united. How to overcome differences in language, ethnicity, and become the same. Their hearts are united. Bil mahabba. 
they so much love each other that they are united. One nasiha, nasiha means to wish good for each other. Nasiha means wishing good. Uh, we use it for giving advice, but the original meaning of nasiha to, is to wish good. These are the companions of Imam Mahdi, Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Those 313, and then those who come after them in rank, they are not from same nationality. <coughs> they may not speak the same language as their mother tongue. Maybe they all learn a common language, but as the mother tongue, they may speak different languages. Their color is different, th their ethnicity is different, but they are united. When you look at them, you don't realize any difference. This is possible. You know, imagine even in the world of business and corporations, if you go to any shop, any office of these big brands, I don't want to mention names, you receive the same service. If you go to a customer service of these brands in any part of the world, you receive the same treatment. The product is the same, protocols are the same. It's not that in every country is different. Or for example, you know, these drinks, Again, I don't want to mention name, but if you take this drink in Canada or US or Pakistan or India or China, it's the same taste. It's not that, for example, in Pakistan they put chili. When it comes to Iran, they put gulab. <laughs> no, it's the same taste. Mu'amen has to have the same taste, the same fragrance, the same akhlaq. The only thing that mu'min should remind you is not a particular culture. Mu'min should remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mu'min should remind you of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. That's the main thing. So, we have to have that level of unity that we become like one Construction or another analogy that we have in our hadith, one body. Rasulullah said, as you all know, Mathalul Mu'minin fi tawadihim wa tarahumihim wa ta'atufihim ka mathal jasad. Jasad means body. Mu'minin is their love, affection, sympathy are like organs of the same body. If one part of body is ill, has infection, fever would not be only in that part. All body would have fever. All body becomes restless. You cannot say, for example, I have pain in my tooth, so my head would not sleep, rest of body sleeps. If you have pain, the whole body cannot sleep. Tada'a lahu sa'irul a'wa bisahar wal humma. Sahar means not sleeping, humma means fever. If there is a problem, kullama ashtaka uzwun, if one uzw has problem, <laughs> Rest of body would support. So, mu'mineen are brothers of the same family. Mu'mineen are like bricks of the same construction. Mu'mineen are like organs of the same body. What else we should be told so that we believe that we have to be united? How we can reach this very quickly? First, the most important thing in my understanding is education. 
Sometimes we want to fix things quickly and education may not be a quick solution because education takes time. Education, especially when you want to change mindset of people, especially if this mindset is built over centuries, takes time. Everyone so far has been brought up with the mentality that try to be a good moment. But now we are saying it's not enough to be a good moment. You have to be a good member of community of mu'minin. Two, you know, two things. To be mu'min by your own is easy. But if you are, be, are told to be a good member of community of mu'minin, it's much different. We have to work on changing the mindset of people. Every Shia must learn that I would have no complete sense of identity unless I know to which community I belong. Community is part of our identity. Leadership is part of our identity. Even on the Day of Judgment, it's very interesting. You know, in dunya, when we call people, how we call them? Either we call them by their name, or the name of their father, or in some countries, maybe by tribe. If they want to introduce people or identify people, say members of this tribe. Or by their own name, or name of their father and grandfather. But on the day of judgment, this is not the way to identify people. On the day of judgment, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ People will be introduced, will be identified, will be assembled according to their imam. An imam has umm. Imam has congregation. Imam is not possible to be imam of scattered individuals. Can you have head of a party but there is no relation between members of the party can you have a commander of an army there is no relation between soldiers can you have heart and brain of body there is no relation between organs it's impossible imam comes with ummah imam comes with community therefore when mu'minin are assembled behind their leader, their leader takes them to heaven. They don't go to heaven individually. They are resurrected individually, but they go to heaven as community. This is very beautiful. Every person first is resurrected as individual. When we come out of the grave, when we are resurrected, every person is on his own or her own. But then a call will be made. Like you know, uh, when you go to the school before the time of assembly, Children are going and playing around. Maybe they are, I don't know, playing. Maybe they are, for example, studying. Maybe someone is going to washroom. They are doing different things. Everyone is doing something. But when is the time of assembly? There must be a system to organize them. For example, by class. Or a senior student stands and people stand behind, or teacher. There must be a system to assemble and organize people. This system on the Day of Judgment is based on leadership. Imam here can be bad Imam, can be good Imam, can be Pharaoh, can be Ibrahim, can be Musa. 
can be Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it comes to Fir'aun, Allah says, يَقْدُمُ قَوْمَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ On the day of judgment, he would be the leader of his people. فَأَوْرَدَهُمُ النَّارِ But takes them to hell. How they go to hell? Together. Because in dunya, they were together. Fir'aun doesn't like this. He wants to do, you know, bara'ah. اِسْتَبَرَّ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوا those who were followed, they want to distance themselves from those who followed them. doesn't work. Those who followed them want to distance themselves by saying, Ya layta lana karratan fanatabarra'a minhum kama tabarra'u minna. They say, we wish we could go back to dunya and distance us. It's not working. Therefore, سِيغَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرَ So, Fardan should Sarah became Zumaran. Mu'mineen siqa alladheena taqaw rabbahum ila al-jannati Zumara. Anyway, in our education, we have to put this message from nursery up to university and hose that we are part of a community my understanding of my own identity is shaped and formed by my belonging to community of Mu'mineen. If there is anything good, it's for all of us. If there is anything bad, it's for all of us. Not that, you know, I make my own arrangements and I just benefit from community. Look at du'as, how much emphasis is put on thinking about community. In dua iftita, Allahumma inna nashku ilayka faqda nabiyyina wa ghaybata waliyyina. Inna. Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatan kareema. Tu'izzu biha al-islam wa ahlah. Wa tu'zillu biha al-nifaq wa ahlah. Wa taj'aluna fiha min al-du'at. In dua after ziyarat aminullah, we say, اللهم أذهر كلمة الحق وجعلها أولياء وأذهر كلمة الباطل وجعلها السفلاء. We say to Allah سبحانه وتعالى كف عنا أعداءنا واشغلهم عن أذانا وأذهر كلمة الحق و أعداءنا أذانا is all about us. In dua ندبه متى ترانا ونراك وقد نشرت لواء النصر ترى It's not me, it's us أترانا نحف بك وأنت تأم الملا It's all we So this has to be in education It's very important The other thing is Unity of community cannot be established if the community does not understand its priorities. And priorities cannot be understood if community is not acting by reason. Its community is not rational. If community is more emotional than rational, never unity can take place. Because emotions can either make you obsessed or hate. Emotions without aql always goes to extreme. Hubbu shay yu'mi wa yusim. When you love something, it makes you blind. You cannot see the problems. So you see, we have, for example, 100 members. Some of them love each other so much that even if the other person does batil, they support him. And hate others, even if the other person is telling the truth, they don't accept. Because they are driven by emotions. You know, we, for example, have family relation, we come from the same village, we come from the same tribe. So, based on that, we decide, we make decisions. We want to, for example, choose someone 
to take a role for community, many times it's based on emotions. If it is based on aql and everyone acts rationally, unity can be achieved. You can work with someone for the sake of Allah, even if you don't like that person. For example, you know, sometimes people say, I don't know why I don't like this person. I don't like his face. The first day I saw him, I didn't like him. Are these things hujja between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? Can you say, this person was a bad person because I didn't like his face? Did you give him chance? Did you ever try to be a close person to that person? And then many times you see, now I'm not saying always, but many times you see the people that you didn't like, actually they're very good people. It's not that everyone is a person whose heart is so, you know, uh, gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with vision that can distinguish people by just looking at them. So this is mu'min, this is not mu'min. 99% of people don't have this vision. We love people just because of our upbringing, because of customs, many things. You know, if you know you come to a place and one person every time you know greets you and respects you, you know offers you his place, you will love him. If he doesn't do this, you know you don't love him. Many things are just so simple like this. But unfortunately, you see, we make decisions many times based on this. So. In our education, we should put great emphasis on rationality, on wisdom, not just on emotions. Emotions are very important. Life without emotion is boring. But if it is just emotion, you know, emotions are like salt for food. Like a spice for food. You cannot have just salt and a spice. <laughs> there must be depth. There must be a content. There must be some rice and meat. Some vegetables. Religion cannot be just emotion. And to be honest, I think there is something alarming, you know, in our community in many places. We are more emotional than rational in many cases. We have to be rational and have measured emotions. Not to have emotions is bad, but to have excessive emotion is not you know, good. Rational. If we are rational, then for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can... 25 years like Amir al Mu'minin work with the people that we don't have any e emotional ties with them. <laughs> this is what we need. Who has more emotional concerns than Amir al Mu'minin? If he was supposed to be emotional, he has more reasons than anyone else in the world to act out of emotion. I don't want to explain the details. But if there is any person that is supposed to act according to emotion, it's Amir al Mu'minin. But you don't see emotional behavior. Pure wisdom, pure aql. If for the sake of Islam, he has to work, even give advice, even give support to the people that. He doesn't have emotional affinity with them. He does it. This is what we need. So, the second thing is working on increasing the standards of rationality and aql. Imam Qasim alayhi salam says something. Very beautifully in Hadith to Hisham ibn Hakam. You know, in the beginning of Kafi, in Kitab al Aql al Jahl, there is this Hadith. It's very beautiful, Alhamdulillah, in the Shrine of Lady Ma'asuma. We had 11 lectures on this, it's online. Imam Qasim on intellect. He says, 
the best of people in Iman are Akshmaluhum Aqlan. Those who are more Aqil, more rational, they are the best. Aql is very important. Sometimes, for example, people started praising someone in the presence of Imam Ma'asum alayhi salam. They said, you know, he is very good, mashallah, for example, you know, praying, fasting, all these things. Imam asked, how is his aql? Tell me about his aql. <laughs> That's the main thing. Is he a person of understanding? Does he make decisions based on studying, thinking, consultation, measuring the outcomes for doing, not doing, and does a rational decision or not? Those who come with emotions, they can be driven away also by emotions. Emotions are not enough. If you know someone comes for example, towards religion by music and singing or, for example, some of the things which look like singing and music, they can also find something more stimulating and go away. You know, some faith communities have tried to attract people by music and dancing to their places of worship. Okay, maybe they come in the beginning, but then they go after a while to places that they have better <laughs> dance and music. Why they should come to this place? Rationality is very important. And of course, emotional expressions are also needed and they are very important, but they are not the main thing. They are not the priority. The third thing is that we have to train ourselves, especially our children, to learn how to work as a team, not as individuals, as team. For everything, we should try to have a team. Even, for example, if for Masjid, we have to have several positions, let's make it as a team. If in the classroom they are going to do some homework, ask them to do it as a team. Unfortunately, many times we find it easier to act on our own. You say, you know, it takes so much time to coordinate and, you know, discuss. And so it's better I do it on, on my own. Okay, for a small things, maybe. But if you don't learn how to act as a team, then how can we run the community as a team? We cannot all of a sudden change our mentality. Even for their games, for playing, for anything, we should teach them to have this mentality of teamwork. We should learn how we should make decisions in a collective way. You know, one of the things that unfortunately is very common is that people think that they are to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on what conclusion they have made. This is a very scholarly issue, you know, I say it very quickly. You know, in Usul al-Fiqh we have a discussion about hujjiyatul qata certainty they say it's valid by itself they say hujjiyatul qata is zatiyatun when you are certain you are 100 percent sure that something is the case they say it's hujja and i think this creates problems for the people who don't understand this properly because then every person says i am sure that we must do this say so, Please, you know, let us discuss this together. No, I am 100% sure that this is the case. I have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my duty. This is my taklif. I am sure. This is not rational. For a community 
when one individual is sure it has no value. For community decision is to be made collectively. Otherwise every person can be sure. Between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can you argue on the day of judgment and I say, you say, 90% of the people were thinking one way, but I was sure that I am right, I left them. Or we were few people, we left the community because we were sure. What is the value of this? Amruhum shura baynahum. Mu'minin should discuss and have consultation. Even if you think that your way is good, when you see majority of mu'minin have another view, respect them, work with them, support them, pray that they are right. It's not that revelation has come to you. You are sure based on your experience. They are also sure. In such cases, we have to go by majority or by a system. We appoint some people to make decision on our behalf. Or if it is like general assembly decision, we go by majority. There is no other, better way other than respecting the opinion of other mu'minin. We are not talking that majority, for example, every time is good. But between mu'minin, amruhum shura baynahum. If amruhum shura baynahum means that they discuss and then afterwards everyone insists on his opinion and then they say goodbye to each other. What is the benefit of Amrohom Shura by now? Amrohom Shura by now means that they discuss among ourselves and then they make a decision collectively. You can never expect 100% people be happy, but those who are not happy should respect the opinion of other mu'minin as majority. So this is also very important that we should learn how to act as a team, how to make decision as a team, how to uh, distribute tasks as a team. Another thing which is very important, no community can survive, let alone progress, without having a very strong culture of volunteering. <coughs> Volunteers are the joints, they keep community together. Without volunteering, we cannot do anything. And people should learn that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of community, they should sacrifice their comfort, their free time, and volunteer. You cannot have any good community without volunteers. You cannot always, you know, for example, employ people. Even if you have resources, baraka is in volunteering. Yes, maybe there are some positions that people have to work full time and we have to look after their cost. But not that everything is paid. Even, for example, people want to do something, you know, I don't want to mention expect to be paid or you know when you have something all people disappear people should volunteer so if you look at this beautiful passage in du'a in nudba it's teaching us volunteering hal min mu'inan fa utila ma'ahu al wal buka is there any helper with whom I cry, but something more. I can cry longer. In some of the translations, this is not reflected. Utila ma'ahu. It doesn't say fa'abchi ma'ahu. It said utila ma'ahu al-abila wal buka. Is there anyone crying for you so that I can help him and then we can cry longer. Crying is very personal issue. But they are telling us that even for crying you should look for helpers. You should work as a team. You know, imagine in the night of, for example, Qadr, night of Ihya. If we were doing things on our own, 
if you are going to Hajj Ziyara on our own, it doesn't have the same taste. It doesn't have the same chance of acceptability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Plus, you may not have energy when you are on your own. When you see and look at other mu'mineen, you give energy to each other. And yadullah ma'al jama'ah, Allah helps us. When we want to clean masjid, if we work together, we get energy. But if everyone says, you know, I come on this time and I do it, for example, my part on my own. He becomes tired. But if we work together, each of us can work more. هل قذيت عين فصاعدتها عيني على القضاء؟ Is anyone in pain and his eyes are bruised and injured so that my eyes take part of the pain? So you want to volunteer. Even you want to volunteer by offering your eye, taking pain of someone else. It's the beauty of community. هل من جزوع فأصاعد جزعه إذا خلا هل قذيت عين فصاعدتها عيني على القضاء We don't have time to explain. The other thing I just mentioned quickly is organization. We need to organize ourselves. In every center there must be organization. Between centers in the same town there must be some kind of organization. They can be independent. I'm not saying they must be independent or not de independent. But there must be some kind of coordination at least. Some level of organization at least. How can you be working for the same imam and for the same cause, but you are not working together? Which party can survive like this which army can say which com corporation company can survive like this that the people who are working for that company they don't coordinate and everyone thinks he understands better than others this is impossible there must be some level of organization and this must then bring all the mu'mineen from all over the world under one organization. We have to work towards this. The other thing is that we have to train ourselves for being good disciples, good followers. This is my last point. Nowadays, many people have courses on leadership. I am not against it, but I say the way I understand is that you don't need to be trained as leader. You have to be trained as follower. Good followers become next leaders. Good students become next scholars. You know, if I go to the lecture of my teacher and I want to become like him, and from now on I am thinking of, you know, replacing him, or if I go to Marja and I want to replace Marja, courses on Marjaiya, this is not making sense. If you look, uh, study the history of Maraja, the most loyal, the most obedient students learn and then they become Marja. Not because they wanted to become marja, not they had the ambition, not that you know were trained for that. They so much respect and love and follow the marja, they become like. If you look at, for example, Amirul Mu'min Ali Salam. And study his life carefully. You don't see anything about him preparing himself to become a leader. You see just a person who is 100% obedient to Rasulullah. Just trying to be available. What Rasulullah wants, he is there. This person who is selfless, 
then can succeed Rasulullah. But if someone is ambitious and is thinking of leadership, oh, I have all the uh, skills and all the, you know, I have been trained to become leader of this. I'm not against these courses because sometimes we need on a small level. I'm not against it, but I'm saying why we don't have courses and training to be good followers. Good muqallit. Unfortunately, we don't know how to be a good muqallit. <laughs> we expect from Marad, are we good muqallit? Are we good students? Are we good listeners when we come to masjid? <laughs> we have to learn all these things. A community needs one leader, but needs hundreds of followers. We are only fighting on who is the leader. And I believe leaders don't come from heaven as leaders. They are not born as leaders. It is us that we make leaders leaders. If we put our trust in someone and follow him, then sooner or later we would have a good leader. We can replace him. But if any person who takes leadership, we question him, we attack him, we condemn him, no one is going to become leader. Any good leader you must see that he had good followers. Otherwise, he would not have become leader. We have to learn. If we want to succeed as a community, we have to learn how to support people who have responsibility and position. And of course, those people, of course, they are not tyrant, they are not, you know, dictators, they are brought up in the same culture, so they would be very humble. That's their responsibility. Leaders should be humble. Leaders should listen, should respect, to the, uh, respect the opinion of people, but we cannot make this condition. We only follow you if you listen to us. <laughs> so what's the benefit? Or we force them to follow the majority. Even sometimes leader may have some difficult decisions to make. And he cannot convince the majority. Because the majority don't have the qualifications for leadership. We say to Marja, you know, you have to change this fatwa. Because majority of your muqalladin are not happy. He cannot change his fatwa based on majority of muqalladin. Even 99% of Mughaladin disagree. He cannot change his fatwa. Because he has something, some hujja that we have to accept. accept. Okay, I think I stop here. I don't want to take your time more. This is a very broad area. And even if we make one step success, inshallah, it would be leading to other steps of success, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his best of salawat to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, please enable us to understand the true message of Islam, the true message of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, and become examples of those beautiful teachings of Ahlul Bayt for others. Please enable us to establish unity in our families, in our communities, and worldwide. Please enable us to prepare for the coming of Imam Zaman Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and be at his service after he comes. Please make our Imam Zaman happy and pleased with us and please accept his du'as for Faraj and for his Shia and for all humanity. Please give shifa to all people who are ill, especially people that brothers and sisters here have in mind. Please give them shifa. Please forgive all marhumin, especially those who have rights upon us, our parents, for parents, teachers, ulama, martyrs, maraja. 
Please forgive marhumin of the brothers and sisters who are here. Please keep us and our children always on the right path, away from calamities, especially those calamities which relate to our faith and iman. Please keep us away from them. And please make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين